Rally is the second of three hill rallies this year. And following on from our coverage of round one back in May, the crew's headed to Walters Arena in Wales for the second of the challenging tests. With the usual tricky conditions expected at an AWDC event, this two-day test would certainly provide a good battle for the eventual winner and finishers. Before we head to the stages, let's have a quick look at this weekend's entry. Chris Bird leads the crews away. He didn't have much luck at the first round back in May. Andy DiGiulio has the car repaired after his AWDC championship role. And Rick Mann makes an occasional UK appearance between outings in France. Ed Cobley leads the Defender Challenge crews away from 7th. On to the first couple of stages then and it would be Rick Mann and Pete Wilson that take the early lead. 20 seconds of an advantage over the first four stages, taken mainly by being brave in the slippery conditions. It's slippery, changing grip. Um, it's amazing once you start to push on, you actually start to find more grip and you get more confidence in the car. In fact, Pete Wilson, my co driver, he uh, visibly noticed it and uh, he had to slow me down on a couple of occasions. We were getting a bit carried away. But yeah, so far, so good. It's, uh, it's Walter's Arena, though. It's uh, always close out there. So. Chris Bird and Amanda Garrettly started well, leading the entry this weekend and struggling a little with the lines. The event this weekend will be running on tulip diagrams supplied by the event, with no recce of the stages, so the first run through would always be a bit of a sighting map. It's real slippery, uh, first car on the road we make in the track, um, I can sweep in, sound like Sebastian Ogier now, don't I? But, um, <laughs> I wish. Um, it, we sweep in and doing a lot of like you, you can't, there's no line at the moment. Second run was better. We've done a wrong slot in the second stage. My fault just went off at the wrong turn. It was a warning arrow when I turned, so it cost us about 10 or 15, I suppose. Um, but apart from that, just, just steady away. Sail rally, it's a lot, lot of miles. Andy DiGiulio and Paul Jones had a very slight advantage of Bird's lines to follow, but that wouldn't help if they were wrong. A tricky start to the day, but lying in third place for now, and just a single second behind Baird. Yeah, first one really slippery. Um, yeah, they've graded all the tracks, so there's like a two inches of slime on the fast cat ones. Um, we went a little bit wrong on that last stage. I got mixed up on one of the corners and, and had to uh, take a little bit of a ride in the grass, but uh, so it cost us a few seconds. But other than that, yeah, I think we took we were quite, definitely quick on those two stages. Rob Scone and Dave Bowler would have a good start to the event with fourth place, but it wasn't plain sailing. A puncher in the first stage, and the pair also catch a fellow competitor in a later stage. Uh, it's very, very slippery, yeah. I mean, we've gone for the Wrangler tyres, which in hindsight probably wasn't the best decision, but we're getting round, so... Is, that's the, the, is the grip coming back now? <laughs> Not for us. I mean, there's places where it's drying up. I mean, on the Cat 1 tracks, it's all right, but when you get under the trees, I mean, you're not really getting much of the sun on there to dry it out, so it's still very slick. Just like everyone else, Dave Harlow and Sarah Smith were finding the conditions tricky. The second pass feeling much better, but the slippery patches were still there under the trees. Fifth place for now, and leading class B. 
Yeah, really good. Really enjoying it. No real problems so far. So, plus a lot of cars broken down in the stage. So, uh, I think we've uh, hopefully made a bit of time up. Um, other pe other people's misfortune rather than our uh, good driving. But yeah, no, it's going well. Is it going good? Sadly, it would be a bad start for James King and Sally Lewis too. Fifth place after the opening stage, but a steering issue on stage two would drop them out of the results. There would be a bit of vibration for Mark Jacks and Simon Last over the morning stages, but nothing that was slowing them down much. They end stage four in sixth place and second in class D behind Harlow. Navigational issues, uh, some arguments over the flags with my co driver and not the officials, but no, it's good actually. Yeah. Two, four good runs, so yes, yeah, really good course. Really, what about really. your surface? Is it sort of getting grippier? It's better than it used to be, a lot better. Um, obviously, they've graded it all, and the first run it was a bit slippy, but now there's a dry line through it, so no, it's good. Yeah. Ed Cobley and John Tomley would lead the Defender Challenge crews from the start, and that's where they end the morning. Seventh overall and leading the class. Damage to a couple of rims was a reminder of how easy it is to get a puncture at this venue. Very slippy the first two stages this morning, which we expect at Walters. Um, no real ruts to sort of hook the tyres up. Um, stage three, stage four, which is a repeat of stage one, stage two. A lot grippier, we can push a lot more, brake a lot later. Uh, we were in one of the big ditches and it literally is like driving your car down a ditch and um, we just caught the, the side of the rims on two large rocks. We've just got to back down. But we took nearly 40 seconds out of our stage time from the previous one, which was really good. So uh, Team Sturge is doing well as normal. So let's hope it carries on for the weekend. No problems for Martin James and Charlie Potter. Finding the stage is slippery just like everyone else. And their aim this weekend to get to the finish. Eighth place was a good start to the weekend for the pair. Uh, oh, went all right. A very slippery of first two stages. A um, load of uh, just mud and slick on the top. It was terrible. But uh, last two stages now dried out with all the cars going through, so it's much, much more controllable. So Gareth Carruthers and Wallace McKay would be taking the same approach. Take it steady and get to the finish. Aware of how long these events are and how much survival would be key to a result. Second in the Defender Challenge after Stage 4. Very slippy in places. One minute you've got piles of grip, the next minute you'll have no grip. So you have to be very careful. Under the trees is very slippy in particular. Yeah. And rounding out the top ten were Brian Palmer and Callum McPhail. Third of the Defenders, but the gaps in the times were already starting to open up now. Some of the classes outside the top ten and it would be 11th place overall for Drew Bowler and Sam Mumby as they round out the top of Class D with third in the class. Henry Webster and Joel Haylock have a few teething problems with the car on the opening stages. Having been rebuilt over the last few years, it was like new again. They do lead the way in Class B though. Uh, well, it's the first time out with this car. We've been uh, doing a three-year rebuild on it. Um, and so uh, I've literally only just driven it down the road. So um, expecting issues and, yeah, finding a few issues. Um, we pretty, pretty, pretty pleased with that, the block. Uh, it was very quick straight off, but we're having problems with the handbrake binding, so we're trying to deal with that now, and uh, hopefully we get, just get faster and faster as I learn how to drive it. There will be a couple of freelanders here this weekend, and it will be Steve and Heather Carroll that get the early class lead 19th overall and leading Class A. And it would be one place back for Grant White and Yanto Evans as the pair line 20th overall and second in that class. Chris and Stuart Bowler would be alone in Class G this weekend so their battle would just be against the stages. 22nd overall now for the pair after a maximum time on Stage 4. And just the one car in Class C as well this weekend as Mark McNeil and Paul Chambers lead the way there, but with a couple of maximums putting them down in 23rd. And a bad start for Rod Parker and Derek Wheeler. The car cutting out in the morning stages and giving them plenty of maximums. But they do hold second in Class B. So at the end of the morning's first four stages, it's Rick Mann that leads, with Chris Baird and Andy DiGiulio fighting out for that second place.
on to the next few stages and there would be a major change. As Rick Mann and Pete Wilson get a puncher in stage six and drop some time, meaning they lose the lead and end up in third place now. stage it was stage stage six which we dropped probably nearly 48 seconds and uh, nearly did a bit of tree climbing on that last one I've uh, taken the back of the car out on a tree but on the edge of a gorge so um, yeah close one but we're, we're pushing hard you've got to do it haven't you so. the time loss for man is of course good news for those behind including Chris Byrne and Amanda Garrett Lee, who gain the lead of the event now and open up a good advantage in that place themselves Okay, yeah, we, we, give it, we come off the cart a bit quick. I'm going to give the front a bit of a tweak, but nothing really to worry about. It's pretty clean. We've got four, four no, no punches, basically. And, um, yeah, all right. And for Andy DiGiulio and Paul Jones, it would be second. Also jumping above man, but unable to match the pace at the front at this stage. They were going to have to watch behind them, as man was only 14 seconds of their times. It's dry now. It's getting faster. We, uh, I think we'd be quick. We were quicker on both those two stages than our previous time. So I don't know where we are. Second, I think. I don't know. No change for Rob Scone and Dave Bowler. The pair remain in fourth, but another puncture and a gear selection problem were not helping the times. Dusty now. Gone from slippy to very dusty. Uh, get him round still. We had a puncture again on the last lap. Ed Cobley and John Tomley gain a few places in this loop to move up to fifth, still leading the way in the Defender Challenge, but the conditions were taking their toll on the car's suspension. Nothing serious, just a few brushes to be changed overnight. Brilliant. No, really rough. We've got a few bushes gone underneath that we've got to change tonight um, on the rear radius arms, but uh, nothing to be uh, worried about. Fantastic. Really good. Dave Harlow and Sarah Smith lose a bit of time. The front wheel bearing coming loose in these stages and being held in place, mainly with the pressure of the brakes, which of course wasn't going to help with the times. Sixth place for now, but still leading, Kirsty. Um, yeah, not so well. Um, front wheel bearings uh, come loose, and uh, so we're having to try and keep the pressure on the wheel bearing with the brakes, and I think we've lost front wheel drive as well, so a bit of work to do now. The plan to keep things steady and get to the finish was working for Gareth Carruthers and Wallace McKay. With only one adventurous moment over one of the jumps looking to threaten that. Seventh overall and second in the defenders. Not too bad. It was good two stages, enjoyed them. Um, there was a jump right enough, I went a bit too hard on, landed heavy in the nose, but Navigator's given me a bit of a telling off for it. But 
I need to make sure to calm it down for the next time. Drew Bowler and Sam Mumby climb the results in these stages and jump inside the top ten. Some good pace in the overall and class results to move them up to eighth overall and second in class D. Very well, yeah. It's a uh, long time since we've done this, so we're going to need to get back into it. We're really enjoying it. Yeah. Brian Palmer and Callum McPhail gain a single place in this loop. No change to the class, though, as they remain third in the defenders. Not bad for only the driver's second hill rally and co-driver's first. That's great, yeah. We're having an absolute ball today. Um, second ever hill rally and this is just great fun today. I'm rounding out the top ten now with Christian Vermont and Peter Janssens. A slow start while they got used to the conditions, but the times were looking good now. Good run. Uh, we had a good run. We started off uh, quite uh, slow, but it's uh, getting better every stage. I hope so. Are you enjoying it? Very much. It's uh, a lot of fun. It's uh, s uh, slippery parts, uh, gravel parts. It's uh, a lot of fun. Brilliant. Sadly for Mark Jacques and Simon Last, there would be problems in these stages as they go off slightly and snap the track world end. They repair the car and get going again, but not before dropping to 14th overall and third in class D. Uh, well, it was all going really, really well until the uh, the run before the last run we were just done and we snapped a track rod end and it stuffed us in the trees. But luckily we did manage to change the track rod end and get going, but obviously we've dropped right down the field now. But apart from that, everything's all right. A maximum in the final stage of this loop didn't help Martin James and Charlie Potter. They remained second in Class E, but dropped down to 15. There wouldn't be any change to the Class A battle, with Steve and Heather Carroll remaining in the lead there. Despite a puncture, everything was going well. It's uh, getting a bit dusty, but it's getting a little bit faster. The big lads is taking a lot of the tops off. Uh, with this little free land, you've got to watch the little yumps and the big rocks. But uh, yeah, apart from a puncture, we've, uh, we've done very well today. We're happy. And it would still be second in the class for Grant White and Yanto Evans. Aware that keeping the car going all weekend would be key to a good result especially with plenty of others ahead having problems. Uh, I think the uh, attrition is going to win the day, um, so we're just taking it really, really easy, um, um, especially with these cars. So it's uh, a little bit driving like Miss Daisy, um, and if we can get through the two days, I think we'll, we'll do pretty well for ourselves. So smooth and steady. Chris and Stuart Bowler were having a few small issues in the earlier stages, mainly with the car not being out for a few years. But they end this loop in 19th place. Yeah, very good indeed, very good. Very fast stages. Had a few little upsets on the one or two of the first stages, but we're holding our own now. This car hasn't been out for nearly five years, so it's learning a whole new car again, so to speak. But no, really super fast stages, and the weather's holding as well. Brilliant, no problem at all. Bad luck in this loop for Henry Webster and Joel Haylock. They blow the gearbox in the car and have to send one of the team on a road trip to collect another to fit it overnight. Luckily close to the end of day one, and the penalties don't change their Class B lead. Mainly, however, because there will be a few maximum times for Rod Parker and Derek Wheeler too. They lie in 23rd overall, and still second in the class behind Webster. So with just one more stage to go today, it will be all changed at the top. Chris Bird, the new leader, and the fight for the podium places were now between DiGiulio and Matt. On to the final stage of the day and there wouldn't be any change in the results for most, with Chris Baird and Amanda Garretley making sure they go into day two with the lead of the event. Andy DiGiulio and Paul Jones manage to hold off Rick Mann as they extend their second place advantage to 34 seconds. Looking good for day two, but the rain was coming. Rick Mann and Pete Wilson must be feeling a little disappointed, leading from the start only for a puncher to turn things around. They end the day with third and over two minutes back from the lead now. No change for Rob Scone and Dave Bowler. The problem's not enough to put them off or change the results, but the top three were running away in a battle of their own now. And it would still be Ed Cobley and John Tomley that lead the Defender Challenge. 
a tidy up of the car and a few small parts needed overnight and the pair would be ready to mix it with the top of the results again on day two. On to day two then, and the weather had to change, but the lead hadn't. Chris Bird and Amanda Garrettly take their overnight lead and extend it to just over two minutes by the end of stage 11. Looking set to be able to enjoy a steady run to the finish. For Andy DiGiulio and Paul Jones, however, the pressure was on. They still hold second at this stage, but it was coming under pressure from Rickman once again. The times were getting close and there would be no room for a mistake in the remaining stages. With a few changes on the car for today to suit the different conditions, Rickman and Pete Wilson were putting in some good times and getting closer to DiGiulio. The gap now was only nine seconds with a handful of stages left to go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Scone and Dave Bowler were managing to keep things going as they were. Stuck in no man's land a little now, unable to catch the podium places, but with almost two minutes of an advantage in fourth themselves. Ed Cobley and John Tomley continued to lead the way in the defenders. The times were good, but with a minute and a half either side of them on the results, they would have to decide if they push or play it safe and take this result for the championship. Just behind Cobley in sixth were Dave Harlow and Sarah Smith. The bearing on the car fixed, giving them back the confidence and brakes to push on. It might be too late for fifth, but they were still leading Class D at this stage. Gareth Carruthers and Wallace McKay were having a good run, putting in some fastest times in the Defender Challenge on day two, but it wouldn't change the positions in that class. They remain second of the Defenders and seventh overall. Drew Bowler and Sam Mumby were enjoying the stages, finding a lot more grip than they expected this morning, but the times to the cruise ahead were getting too big to do anything about. Eighth place for now and second in Class D. There would, however, only be a one minute gap between Drew Bowler and ninth place Brian Palmer and Callum McPhail. A gap that would be possible to change around if they had a good run, but it wasn't going to change their third place in the defenders. I'm rounding out the top 10 at the end of this morning's stages with Christian Vermont and Peter Janssens. Fourth of the defenders, but a couple of minutes behind Palmer ahead. In the classes outside the top 10, it would be some good times for Mark Jacques and Simon Last, setting some top 10 times and moving up to 12th overall, remaining third in Class D. No change to Class A, Steve and Heather Carroll still leading the way in that class and their advantage was growing and looking like things were going to stay this way to the finish. Which means that for Grant White and Yanto Evans, it was looking like second in Class A this weekend. But with a few more stages to go, anything could happen. There wouldn't be any change in the class for Chris and Stuart Bowler, of course. The only ones in Class G, they had that in the bag. But they were in a position to move up the overall results a little more in the final stages. Yesterday's end of day problems had taken their toll on Martin James and Charlie Potter in the overall results. 19th overall now, second in Class E, but the times this morning were looking better already. And after a long night of gearbox repairs, it would be the Class B lead still for Henry Webster and Joel Haylock. The only ones in the class, but they were enjoying setting some competitive times again. So after the first few stages on day two, the results remain similar, with Chris Bird leading the way and that close battle between DeGiulio and Mann ready to be decided in the remaining stages. On to the next couple of stages and no change for the leaders. Chris Bird and Amanda Garrettley continue to lead the way. Still two minutes of a lead, so the pressure was off as long as they could keep it on the road. It's awful wet, as you can see. There's lots and lots of standing water. It's slip, slippy offline. Uh, it's cleaning up now quite well, but if you get offline, it's a problem. Yeah, it was okay. Two, four steady runs. There was, however, change in these stages to second and third place, as Rick Mann and Pete Wilson jump up to second place behind Bird, and more importantly, have a 17-second advantage now over DiGiulio.
good. We're uh, sort of trying to push as hard as we can, but not get punctures. That's yeah. the danger. We've, we dropped a minute and a bit yesterday with a puncture. You, you just you don't know what's out there. It's so unexpected. Yeah. Um, you've got to push. You've got to push really hard, but then avoid the rocks. Keep it neat and unbelievably rough, though. Unbelievably rough. All the rocks have cut out from yesterday. So that it means it would now be third for Andy DiGiulio and Paul Jones. They have a fuel delivery issue on the car in these stages, causing them some lost time, which would need to be looked at in service now. Any problems? Uh, yeah, first stage I have a bit of an overshoot, so it cost me 10 or 12, and then Rick took time out of me on the second stage. Um, I've got to turn the wick up. I pushed a bit harder on those two last. Um, we were definitely quicker, but I've got to see what they come in with. So at the moment we're in second, but only just, I think. The rest of the places were looking like they were all decided. Not much changing in these two, as Rob Scone and Dave Bowler continue to hold third in Class F and fourth overall. Just making sure they get to the finish now. Wet, slippery, as you can tell. But we just are in fourth, I think, as far as I'm aware. So we're just driving to survive, basically. It would be a similar story for Ed Cobley and John Tomley, looking to ensure they get to the finish and maintain the Defender Challenge lead to help with their championship campaign. Um, first two stages, phenomenally slippy, um, but the, the new Coopers are uh, hooking up for us really, really well. Um, we're letting the car in the Defender Challenge have a bit of time. We got a really nice gap yesterday. Um, so just controlling it from the front and trying to preserve my championship. But no, St Team Sturgis, the Defender once again, getting us through. Nice deep water, which we do like with our snorkel on. We can go through it fairly quick. Um, but no, great stages, thanks to the All-Wheel Drive Club. What they've done with the stages are absolutely out of this world. They are really great driver stages. No more problems for Dave Harlow and Sarah Smith as they continue to lead the class and that's where they intend to finish. Just aiming to finish now and not do anything silly in the final stages. Yeah, quite slippy to start with but it's drying out nicely now so just trying to uh, keep it on the road and uh, get a finish. Gareth Carruthers and Wallace McKay were happy with their performance today. The car was behaving itself and they just had to make sure they did too. Nothing silly and the pair was set to take second in the Defender Challenge. Really well, the uh, lookers Land Rover's going brilliantly, so yeah. it is, um, I'm enjoying the stages, very very slippy, but I'm enjoying them. No problems for Drew Bowler and Sam Mumby, they remain second in Class D and eighth overall. A cautious start to get used to the conditions was now being turned up and the times were looking good. Really well actually, there's more traction than you think, so uh, we we're very um, cautious first two stages but starting to go a bit more now so uh, I'm really enjoying it actually far more far better than uh, we expected this morning no change for Brian Palmer and Callum McPhail ninth overall and third in the defender challenge at this stage settling into the wet conditions of day two a little more now um, getting a lot better third second time round much better than the first um, got into us you know just settled into it and uh, it was good fun and it would be a further move back up the results for Mark Jacques and Simon Last. They remain third in Class D, but move up to round out the top 10 after Stage 13. Uh, yeah, it's starting to dry up now though, so uh, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's different doing it backwards, but obviously now we're getting used to it, it's drying up, so yeah, another good course. Car's going well as well, so yeah, we're enjoying ourselves. So before we take a look at the final results, Here's a reminder of the top of the leaderboard. On to the final results then and it would be a 20th place finish for Martin James and Charlie Potter. They do take the Class E win though despite a worse than expected finish this weekend. 
no problems with the class win for Steve and Heather Carroll this weekend. They end the event with the class A win after leading throughout the two days of competition. Chris and Stuart Bowler were of course safe with the class G win. They set themselves some good times to take 14th overall. A good finish for the pair in the unfamiliar car. No advance for Mark Jacques and Simon Last. They managed 10th, but that was as high as they could go. The result will be welcome though after the day one problems. A good weekend for Brian Palmer and Callum McPhail. They take away third in the Defender Challenge, as well as ninth overall. It would be a lucky finish for Gareth Carruthers and Wallace McKay. They roll the car in the final leg of the event, but fellow competitor Drew Bowler stopped to pull them back onto their wheels and allow them to limp out of the stage, luckily just managing to keep hold of their second place in the Defender Challenge. And the good deed by Drew Bowler and Sam Lundby was rewarded with a place gained with seventh overall and second in Class D. Dave Harlow and Sarah Smith do what they needed to do and make it to the finish of the event without any more problems, taking sixth overall and managing to take the Class D win. No problems for Ed Cobley and John Tomley as they strengthen their Defender Challenge season hopes by taking the win in that category here this weekend as well as finishing in fifth place overall. Rob Scone and Dave Bowler battle through the various issues this weekend to get themselves to the finish with that fourth place they held all weekend. A good finish for the pair in that place. Sadly for Andy DiGiulio and Paul Jones, it would be further fuel problems in the final stages, leaving them with third place. A good battle all weekend and some close times made for a thrilling fight for the podium places. So that means it was a second place finish for Rick Mann and Paul Wilson. It wasn't the win they wanted, but after the day one puncture, it was the best they could expect. just over two minutes. So at the end of the event, the results look like this. Yeah, it's been a good event. We've, you know, we pushed and when we've had to and took our time when we needed to. So it's been, yeah, it's been great. It's been challenging and, you know, changeable. It was dried out lovely yesterday, then it absolutely hammered on this morning. So we had lots of standing water, lots of uh, really slippery new tracks they've opened up. So, yeah, it's been, it's been a good challenge. We've been to Wishbone this morning, somewhere along the back. It, we hit a run over a rock, I think, and it sort of rattled under the car. So it's been to Wishbone, so the rear geometry's out a little bit on it, but nothing, nothing to write home about. Oh, it's gone really well. Uh, puncture that knocked us back on uh, Saturday. Uh, we managed to pull it back today, though. Um, trying to avoid all the rocks, push as hard as we can. Pete's done a great job on the notes. Well, notes, the uh, reading the map, should I say? And uh, uh, we just pushed hard as we can. Uh, a few dodgy moments, but um, it's been great fun. The car's not missed a beat, which it's not bad for a 16-year-old car built in a shed, is it? Yeah, it's been enjoyable. I mean, at least the sun's come out and uh, finished. It's finished off nice. So, yeah, no, it's been good. 
last stage of today, um, we had a fuel issue, or, and so uh, but we sorted that out for the last one. But yeah, it cost us a minute. So we were we were dicing with Rick for second. Um, yeah, but we lost a minute to him from the second from last stage. So we just had to go out really and hope either he had a problem, and we kept it clean, or we just yeah we're driving for third. Wales, Land Rovers, off-road, perfect. Uh, a real great weekend. Thanks to the All Drive Club um, for laying this event on. The stages have been out of this world. They really have. Um, really technical, then added with some real fast, then added with some real slippy bits, um, some lovely crests and jumps. Um, but the uh, Team Sturgis bowler defender has uh, brought us to the finish. I think we've got a top five place and a standard defender, which is brilliant. The best birthday present to myself as well. That's all we've got time for here in Wales for the AWDC Ali Sport Hill Rally. You can catch more off-road action in our AWDC Championship shows throughout the rest of the year. Thanks for watching.